Okay, hello everyone. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be talking here from New York. We are at uh, NRF, the National Retail Federation. Big show. This is the largest retail event worldwide. Uh, and I'm really excited and happy to be announcing our guest, Tiago Splitter. I will let him talk about himself, but we all know he is one of the Brazilian stuff that came to the U.S. and was very successful playing on, I would say, the most exciting basketball place you could play in the world. So we as Brazilians, we are very proud of you. And uh, we think you represent us as a country. And so thank you. Uh, and I also have Kleber Moraes. Kleber is a very good friend. He's the president from AWS in Brazil. AWS is an important partner, the most important partner that Compass has in building digital transformation. And I think that many of you should be asking, what is Tiago here talking about digital transformation? And there's a lot of very interesting things. So I would like to start first asking Tiago to do a quick introduction about yes. yourself. And yes. then I will pass to Kleber that we have some interesting questions and discussion that we can start the conversation today. First of all, thank you very much uh, for inviting me. I think uh, uh, it's an honor to be part of anything that a Brazilian do in the United States and how hard it is to be a successful here, not just in Brazil, but in the, in the world. And when you're here in the biggest retail show in the world, there is something that you guys are doing right. So thank you very much for for having me here. Well, a little bit about me. I, of course, I'm a basketball player. I don't know if you guys can see my height there, <laughs> but I'm uh, 210 meters or 6'11 in, in inches. And, well, I always play basketball. My dad used to play basketball, and I grew up, you know, in, in Brazil, which is not a, a country that is you know, known by have great basketball players. We have some like Oscar Schmidt, etc. But I had the opportunity to go to Europe to play basketball there. Then I moved to States. And again, I was super lucky to be in a great team, San Antonio Spurs, and end up winning the NBA championship, right? So uh, that's a very little resume about my career. But uh, that's it. I'm a basketball player, interest with um, everything that you guys do, which is very interesting. And of course, I got some knowledge about what we do in basketball now that I'm coaching. I'm on the other side and we use a lot of technology also to uh, teach our players and also scout for basketball games. So, Kleber, the president of AWS, our greatest partner, please. Oh, th thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here in the middle of NRF. Uh, for us, the Brazilians, right now we have more than 3,500 people here. 3, Understanding what's going on in the technology, understand how the technology could change the retail. And when you start to talk about digital transformation, uh, we see the relation in all the segments, but mainly we can tangible, we can use this tangible in the sports. Right now, for example, on AWS, we are sponsoring like, uh, NFL, to understand how can we improve the, the soccer here in the US, or with Ferrari, uh, how the data could transform and, and support the improvement for the cars and for the pilot and baskets. Any basket, Thiago, to be very honest with you, I love basket. I have two daughters, two of them play basketball, and we see a lot of improvement yeah. on the last years. I used to live here in the United States. And when I was looking some games, the score is so low, and we see a huge improvement on the scores, on the on the athletics. How do you see the improvement of the technology or data is supporting you to uh, you see in, the, in your career and what's going on right now that the technology and digital transformation support yeah, the business? Yeah, you're right. The basketball changed a lot. I would say like from the 80s and 90s, even when I played the 2000s. Uh, the basketball was way slower. The pace of the game is way slower. So the analytics, what we call the analytics, the guys of the numbers and the computers, right, uh, which we have in our staff now as a coach, we have 
two guys in digital analytics and they have the computer all the time. 2010s, kind of, they start to say, hey guys, if you want to score more points, we got to run more. Quicker possessions. That's all the numbers are saying. We need to run more. Quick shots. Come to the office and shoot. Which for the romantics of basketball, they think, wow, that's not basketball. That's just like a pickup game. They're playing in the park and that's not real basketball. Also, the analytical numbers say you got to shoot more threes instead of a long two. Because if you step behind the line, that shot is going to count one point more. So it doesn't make sense. Even if your percentage is better at two-point line, it's better to shoot at three-point line. So that's changed totally basket. Now it's all run and trees. And people say, wow, these guys are crazy. They, they, don't, they don't practice. They just go and run. No, that's not true. We practice that. That's what we want. We need space. We need guys to run to the corners of the basketball so that spread the court harder to defend and you have to bring your defenders close so that open space for us to attack the rim so what we have now is the perfect match to have more points exactly what you said about why we have more points now well because the game is like this it's harder to defend and you need guys that shoot three points run tall athletic so we basically going like for the perfect athlete athlete very precise tall fit because he got to run a lot. So that's what we've seen in the NBA lately. Wonderful, uh, Thiago. It's, it's, it's very interesting to oh, see yeah. how data is helping businesses and sports in what a way Definitely. is a business today, right? Definitely. To understand uh, in many times in real time what's going on. So before Kleber leaves us, I just wanted to ask Kleber, how do you feel about the evolution of the technologies from AWS supporting the entertainment and sports business. You know, we see, as you mentioned, for the last years, at least 10 years, we see a lot of improvement in the technology, uh, considering the sports. As Thiago mentioned, we have a lot of data and analysis regarding that, like uh, how, how they score for the guy, what could be the best place or the probability to shoot in that space, or in the or in the soccer, how can you do to improve yourself? What the angle for the shoot or for something that yes. you make an It's a lot of data that we use. Right now, data means insight to deliver better performance. It's important to mention in all, all companies in all lives right now to understand the transformation and understand how the technology uh, it's inside your lives. It's so important to see. That's how what we are doing, Alex. That's how we are uh, great partners. And that's why more than 35 people stay here today in New York to understand what's the benefits for this transformation. And AWS is helping a lot the customer to do that. It's a real pleasure to be here, Thiago. Good luck this night. And thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you. Clever, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it's really a pleasure to have you here with us. And uh, we want to keep growing our business together and making a lot of success in the sport industry as well. So thank you, Kleber. I, I will move to the next question while I ask Gabriel to line up here. And so the next thing, uh, Thiago, is when we talk about the physical hardware stuff, Internet of Things, cameras, sensors, I know you, when, when you were uh, describing to me the other day some of the technologies that have been used. You spoke about like thing, cameras that are looking into every shoot and trying to understand if the angle that is being used by that particular player is the best. So if you could tell us a little more about how these uh, in the court uh, technologies, sensors, how are they used in basketball so that we can learn a little bit about it? Yeah, you guys got to understand the NBA is the top, top of the league. So we're trying to use every technology to get ahead of our opponents, right? And uh, there's diff different devices that we use. The one that you talk about, about the angle of the shot. So the ball to get to the rim, uh, you got a perfect angle to come, depending where you're shooting from the from the court and there is a machine called Noah that analyzes every shot that the player is taking and let's say he's taking a three-point shot 
and the machine is saying, well, you need a high arc. So the higher you shoot, the biggest is your probability to make the shot and to get there. Or you shoot it too high, and then the machine is saying, no, you need a little bit flatter. So those are one type of things that we use, right? So also, for example, during the World Cup, some uh, soccer players will wear a device on the back here, and it's a GPS. So that GPS is taking all the da data of the player, how much, how many sprints he does, how much he jumps, deceleration, acceleration, all of those things are put in together to see, you know, how is the performance of the player? Is, is he getting tired? Is he fresh? Should we sub him out? He's not uh, his best, um, you know, shape. So all of those little things are used in sports to take uh, some kind of advantage. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really amazing. You see, uh, uh, we from the outside, we don't have much idea about everything that's going on. And it's really very exciting for a tech company like us uh, to see how every single industry in the sports, in the basketball industry is not different, is benefiting from data technologies. Uh, Gabriel, who is here with us, is also from Brazil. He, he has been uh, working with us for several years. He was one of the professionals that led our data uh, and analytics innovation studio, which is the organization that we use to bring ideas to customers, to bring ideas to the market on how to approach data so that we can transform businesses or transform the game. So I know he has some questions that he would like to share yeah, I do. and I, I also would like to thank all the team that has been working with uh, Gabriel for several years now Gabriel has a different role but there's a very important team at Compass and the Compass companies that takes care of data so Gabriel yeah thank you Alexis and Thiago nice to meet you nice to meet you uh, I have a question to you it's regarding how do you use all of this data to create new insights, to enable the staff team, the team staff, the analytics guys, to create new insights to help you keep adapting to this ever-evolving game where other teams might also be using their data on their decisions as well. Exactly. So it's interesting that you say that. Now, you know, we are not the only team that does that. So, for example, there is um, one data that we use is basketball game has you you have to shoot with 24 seconds 24 seconds you got 24 seconds shot to shoot clock. the shot clock right and the, every end of a quarter we call it two for one to have two shots on the end of the for example the game is 40 seconds left that the quarter quarter is 40 seconds left we say that we got to shoot when the clock is at 33 because we know that we're gonna have another shot coming back. So that's a math, right? So, okay, we're gonna shoot at 33, they're gonna grab the rebound, and at the most, they're gonna shoot at 24 seconds. So we're still gonna have some seconds to shoot a last shot. So we, should, we call it, we have, we're gonna have two shots, they're gonna have one shot. Probability to make more points than, than them is ours, right? But we know other teams are doing that as well. So everybody knows the 33 second rule. Right. So what do you do? You know they are attacking. So you try to force them or you try to, you know their shot is coming. So you might double team that player. You might do certain types of defense to stop that, to take that shot or to make that possession a little longer. So those are the little tricks inside of the tricks that we're using right now, you know. We also like to the coaches, right? Like we come from an old school type of basketball, everyone. So we try to talk to our analytical guys. Okay, what if we, we try to bring stories? Okay, what if we have a three for one? When is that? When? It, so we try to bring different stories and challenge our analytical group, right? which is sometimes is harder because they play by the numbers. And let's say a player is a 40% three-point shooter. 40%, which is great in basketball. And the guy missed five in a row. If he's playing basketball, he missed five in a row. As a player, we feel like, oof, I don't know, we should play him. He doesn't have the confidence to stay in the game. 
Now, the guys, what we call it, the guy of the computers would say, no, no, leave him in the court. There's not such a thing as momentum. He's going to make the next, next four shots. That's amazing. And they don't think about momentum, you know, and, and which is crazy. Or a player is a 40% career and he started the season shooting 20%. No, no, we don't care. That is a small sample. He's a 40% shooter. Keep playing him. His percentage are coming back. It's all it's all about repetition. Everybody's going to have slumps, good and bad, but at the end, it's going to be a 40% shooter. So that's how we use, you know, and, and we, you know, a little bit, we force analytical guys, hey, it's not his, you know, it's not his day. He's not shooting. Well, no, keep him in the game. And, and you know, Tiago, when, when we talk about retail, many companies have improved tremendously the capabilities of doing recommendations in their commerce platforms. So, while you, as a customer, are navigating through the website of any major e-commerce company, you will see things that are really very specific to you in terms of recommendation. And those engines that are doing that are exactly the same engines that you are mentioning here, that your <laughs> analytical guys are looking into the behavior yeah. and what's going on uh, with the players and recommending him. What we learned on retail is that the accuracy of the predictions that are done on top of data are much, much, much way higher than the ones that are based only on human instinct. You need to find the right balance and yeah. the combination for that. But if you use data, right, Gabriel? with that the right, right insights you have the right people to make the decisions on top of that, uh, that data because it's it's these two elements are very important not only in basketball but in any business yeah. operation right Gabriel want to talk a little bit about that yeah for sure uh, uh, in, in my point of view when we talk about the challenges in basketball with what you're doing with data it's really close to what we're doing actually in retail also because it's pretty funny that you mentioned the, the shot clock. So you have the 24 seconds, you either score or not. Uh, when a customer enters a physical store or yeah. he enters an e-commerce, you actually also have a shot clock. Yeah. You cannot see it, but you have an amount of time. You yeah. either close the sales or you're going to lose it. So if in that point you start understanding origin of that customer, understanding the behavior he has, understanding how it's connecting to the environment, you can present an actually hyper-personalized offering for him. <laughs> this is how you close sales. This is how you have a better conversion. Yeah. And this is something that I believe is connects what you were saying. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So it's all about conversion. You are conversion. Yeah. You are yeah. converting the sales, you are converting the points. Yes. So, great. G Gabriel, thank you so much. Thank you. I, Thiago, I, I really need to say thank you so much. You. you were so kind in, in uh, joining us in this invitation to be here. This is kind of outside of your day-to-day -day world, I'm sure. Definitely. But I, I need to say I'm impressed with the amount of knowledge that you have about technology and, and how to apply technology to your business, right? Yeah. And, and this is what we try to do with our customers, is exactly that, is to help them understand the power of technology, not to do like just bring and automate stuff, but to add value, oh, yeah, definitely. to increase the potential, to build new channels, to sell more, to grow. So. I think it's really impressive what I learned here today. I'm, I'm really humble to, 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 to see how technology, and, and we all are part of that, is changing the world. And I hope that more and more we have people who are engaged in using technology to improve people's lives. Yep. Because in, in the end of the day, this is our mission. We, sure. we build digital platforms to help our customers to grow and to improve people's lives. So I hope that everyone that joined uh, our session today was able to get some of your wonderful comments and ideas and knowledge and bring it to its own life and see how we can apply this to make a better world and help people to grow. So 
Thank you, thank you so much. much. Thank it you. was a great pleasure. It was my pleasure to yeah. be here and yeah. share a little bit of my world is. I know it's we have the similarities, but um, my pleasure, my pleasure yeah. to be here. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for the folks that are with us online, remotely from Brazil, from all over the world. Thanks to all the Compass Well Well Group companies. And uh, so thanks to Everymind, to WebJump, to Nvilia, to Content Red, to Edgy, to Avenue Code, to the Compass US team that here has been working with us for several years. And there's a lot of growth to come and we appreciate it. We hope you are here again in NRF 2024. See you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.